Okay, this is just a really quick video to show. Um, this is the tram that I just just uploaded a video on uh, some tips and tricks and what not to and not to do when uh, restoring one of these. It's now flipped back over. I've recapped the balance modulator board, cleaned up the contacts on the crystal channel selector board, uh, tested and cleaned all the, the tubes up. There you can see the new CAN capacitor is installed. Um, one tube, and I don't know, here recently, it seems like every tram I've been getting, people have had a 6BQ7 in this socket. And this is a 6BQ7, but this is supposed to be a 6BK7 along with this one. It's supposed to have two 6BK7s. I don't know what the heck gives here recently, but every radio I've been getting has had two 6BQ7s. The difference, and they're, they can be used... Now you can stick a 6BQ7 in a 6BK7 slot, but this is a lower gain tube than this. So if you put a 6BQ7 in this slot, you end up with a little bit reduced performance because this it doesn't have the amount of this circuit will not have the gain that it's supposed to have. But uh, what I'm doing this video on is a a harmonic tube, and this thing is very harmonic. Now I had just flipped this back over. Powered it up. I've had it had it hooked up. You know, always check, make sure current draw. So you can see I have it in the zero to two amp scale. So that's this bottom scale underneath the green bar here. It's a little bit over one amp, and they usually run on receive somewhere between one to you know one and a quarter amps is the the average, depending on if yours is a a hand wired one like this or the later. Uh, circuit board style, and they can vary, you know, just with differences and tolerances of some of the components in them, but that's the safe operating, or the normal operating range for receive. Um, before I ever, ever do even get into the alignment, I just want to give them a basic check over to make sure that, um, you know, the radio is working as it's supposed to be halfway, and there's no troubleshooting that I have to do, that any problems that it had before are now gone, you know, having done all the parts replacements on the underside, testing the tubes and everything that's been done to it. So I give them just a, a quick run through, check transmit, and transmit power is fine on this. Um, it's currently doing about 5 watts dead key, swinging like 17 on AM. Now it's only doing about, uh, I think, 12 on sideband, but like I say, the alignment has, has not even been touched on this. So when I first turned it on, AM received seemed to be okay. I was getting, getting signals, had it hooked up to an antenna live on the air. And I switched over to sideband, was dead quiet. Um, so I hooked it up to the signal, gener signal generator, which is hooked up to now over here. I've got it hooked up, and it's just, uh, right now it's a one microvolt signal on channel 19. Now I just have the signal generator is set on AM, because you can hear, you can still hear an AM signal even when you're on sideband. So there's AM, and there's sideband. And what I'll usually do to, you know, before I go getting too far deep into it to try and troubleshoot, you know, actually do any troubleshooting to see if I actually do have a loss of, you know, of sideband receive or AM, either or, I'll do a quick by ear alignment. You know, I don't even need any uh, equipment hooked up for this. I can just use the, the speaker. It's perfectly fine. So, you know, in AM, I can go through and check. I'll turn it up here enough so you can hear it. But, you know, I'll go through and peek the cores. You know, and these are double these are double cores. So there's a core in the top, core in the bottom. Now like I say, I'm not doing this to this isn't the actual alignment, I'm just doing it to get it. So that I know the circuits are all working. And see if I have any more troubleshooting to do. Now, so AM seems really, really good. Now, I've actually gone through this once. This is actually a second time through it. So, we'll go to sideband and I'll let you see what I had done. I had it on sideband and I had the volume up pretty high, right about there. And it's going to get really loud. I don't know how loud it'll seem over, over the camera, but. You hear that? When I was turning the cores, I noticed 
I could hear it. And I actually had this the last time I did this, when I was turning one of those cores a little bit squeaky, it vibrated the chassis just enough that this harmonic tube, there, actually it's starting to squeal there. There. So turn the tube, turn the volume back down. It goes into an oscillation because it's, it just repetitively, repetitively feeds, feeds back. Because the speaker is, of course, attached to the cabinet, and it's vibrating. The tube's harmonic to start with. Now, it's working fine. There's nothing wrong with it as far as performance goes, because it tested fine. But it's just a lot faster. Instead of testing them for uh, harmonics on uh, Tube Tester when I test the tubes, it's actually just a lot faster for me to test them in the radio, because I can just go through when the radio's turned on, tap each tube, and see if any of them make a sound. You know, go through, all these are fine. Of course, you get to this one. But like I say, I had the volume cranked up, and it gets to a point where that that sound is then starting to oscillate because it's vibrating the chassis. It gets back over into the tube, and you'll hear it. It's starting to do it, and it's just going to keep getting worse and louder and louder and louder and louder as it keeps feeding back through the circuit. So... But I thought I'd show if you, if uh, anyone ever tells you you have a harmonic tube, or if you know I happen to be working on your radio and tell you you have a harmonic tube, that's what I mean by harmonic. Tubes should be like this. When you tap on them, the only thing you should hear is your, you know, whatever you're tapping on the tube with. You shouldn't hear any other sounds. And this is not the tube socket; it's actually the tube. And what causes that? So we'll turn it off here. My tube tongs, because of course this has been on for a little while, so it's a little bit warm. So, let's see how hot she is here. Yeah, a little warm, but not too bad. But in any case, what can cause a vacuum tube to go harmonic? Now, this is a, you can see, see that or not on the glass. But it's a, there we go, it's a 6GH8A, the A's there on the bottom. But what causes tubes to go harmonic? Um, and I've even seen brand new, not brand new manufactured today, because there's very few tubes still made today, but you know, NOS tubes. But what happens is, you know, the, the mica insulators in here can become loose, and because all these little parts, that go, as I drop it onto my lap, but all these little parts in here, inside a tube, your screens, your grids, the heater filaments, everything, you know, they all pass through those insulators. A lot of those have tabs that are bent over, and those parts can loosen up over time. And they don't need to loosen up by very much. Just the tiny, and it's not like the tube has taken, you know, repeated of beating abuse to cause that. Just the normal expansion and contraction, because you got to realize all of these metal parts, they're metal. And this thing goes from, you know, room temperature cold to extremely hot. It's got that glowing filament in there. So the metal parts are expanding and contracting. So over time, parts can, can loosen up in a tube. You know, they're designed not to, but it's just, it's just a fact of life. It can happen to vacuum tubes. I mean, and it's not like this is a cheap junk tube. You know, it's a, you can see, it's a GE. GE had, you know, very high quality tubes. Um... I've pretty much seen harmonic tubes from every manufacturer you can think of, from RCA, Sylvania, GE, Bugle Boys, I mean, you know, ultra premium tubes, you know, it, it can happen to any of them, but uh, yeah, if you ever get that, you get a radio, and it doesn't have to be a tram, it doesn't even have to be a CB radio, it can be a ham radio, um, it can be just a receiver, you know, an old AM receiver, if you ever get a radio where you can just tap it, and you hear something come out of, you know, it, it, that makes a, a noise out of the speaker. You know, a bong, it can sound like a drum or a cymbal, or you'll get that squealing noise. And then, of course, if you had the volume up high enough, it just keeps rising and rising. Because, like I say, the speaker is slightly vibrating the chassis. That gets fed back over to the vacuum tube. It amplifies that oscillation a little bit more, and it just repetitively feeds back through the system. But, uh... I wanted to show that so you could see what an actual harmonic tube sounds like. Um, you know, it doesn't, it's not hurting anything, but obviously it needs to be replaced because 
the last thing you want to do is is be listening to sideband and have this ungodly harmonic squeal come through. Because you know, if you've got your volume set somewhere and a really strong station comes in, that might be enough to to set that thing into self oscillation, and you'll get that repetitive feedback cycle. So. It's just a 6GH8A. They're cheap. It's not like, uh, you know, the most expensive tubes in here. Uh, I'd say there's probably four expensive ones. The two most expensive are going to be your, your final and your driver tube. Dr well, or final and the, the audio and modulation tube. They're both 6L6s. Um, the 12, your driver tube, uh, uh, 12BY7, is going to be, uh, you know, it's not as expensive as these, but you know that's one of the more pricey tubes. And then also, uh, 12AX7 is also going to be uh, a little bit more expensive right here. Um, now it's a 12AX7 in this position in this radio or in the the hand wired versions. If you have a uh, later version that has the circuit boards, this tube is actually located right about here. You'll have a circuit board that stands up here and the 12AX7 stands right about here in those chassis, and actually this 6BA6 will then be the whole way up in the front corner. The tube arrangement's a little bit different in those, but uh, those are the four most expensive tubes in this radio. It is the 12AX7, the 12BY7, and the pair of uh, 6L6s. So the 6GH8As, there's what, uh, one, two, three, four, five of those in this radio. There's a string of three of them right here. Um, then there's this one, and uh, that's where is that that one. That's a 6GH8A also. And then you got uh, three 6BA6s. There's one here, one here, and one here. And the 6BA6s are located a little bit different, like I say, in the uh, circuit board version. So you've got 6BA6, 6BA6, and 6BA6. And then you have you're supposed to have one 6BQ7 and two 6BK7s. Now, like I say, this one had two 6BQ7s because somebody had substituted, which worked. Like I say, in a pinch, it gets you out of a jam. That's why they call them substitutes. They're not ideal. They don't meet the exact specifications, but they, they do work. But uh, So that one's already been replaced. So I'll go grab a new 6GH8A and stick it in there so we can get rid of that ungodly feedback. So I hope... Uh, that explains a little bit about the harmonic tubes for you, so if anybody ever tells you you have one, uh, you'll know what they're talking about.